Hi, my name is Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit channel and in this video I'm going to share the method we use to surface a large countertop on the CNC. So, this is my Avid CNC machine. It is a 5 by 10 foot unit and the surface we're working on today is a cherry countertop. This is a side grain glue up and the final dimensions will measure 2 by 4 feet. So it's a little oversized at this point. Now, I think this project here is an ideal candidate to surface on the CNC since it wouldn't fit through a thickness planer and it is just big and heavy and annoying to move around. Plus, it's just a lot of work to get this nice and smooth. So, CNC to the rescue! So, go to start uh, doing the bottom side first. Step number one, securing the piece. We're using cam clamps here, just holding it in place from the sides since we need access to the entire top to cut on. Like if you didn't need that, you can always clamp from, from the top, but that's not an option here. Creating your file. I'm using Vectric by Aspire. The details may be a little different in another program, but the principles remain the same. And of course, whatever settings you have will vary depending on what machinery you have, what equipment. So just take whatever I'm using with a, with a grain of salt and apply it to your specific situation. Now, since we're surfacing the whole board, it's easier to just overcut it a touch. I'm starting my anchor point at negative 0.5 for both the X and the Y. Now the size of this board will eventually be 48 by 24 inches, so let's increase that just a touch to 49 by 25 inches. Let's set up our toolpath. We're doing a pocket cut starting at zero and we'll go down 0 0.05 inches for this cut here, so five thou. Let's select our bit. We're going to use a two inch end mill. This bit will create a lot of dust, but it's pretty effective. Sometimes I like to use a three quarter inch upcut bit when surfacing, which create more chips, but it's a little rougher and not quite as fast. So I like to calculate how long it's going to take. Okay, one hour and 48 minutes, that's too long. So let's go back and adjust the step over rate from 10% to 40%. This means it will create a rougher cut, but that's okay, it's also a lot faster. And we're doing 250 inches per minute. Okay, this is much better now, it's going to take nine minutes about. So let's start running the first cut. So as you can see, the spindle starts on the inside and works its way out. This is sped up by 2000%. Um, I have dust collection attached here and it's doing a pretty good job of capturing the sawdust. I have a dust chew on here and yeah, I really need to make a video about this project here because this has been really great. It works well. So it looks really good. Um, since this is the, the bottom side, I'm not going to do another pass. I mean there's a little bit of a dip right there but it doesn't matter for the bottom. So, but before actually turning it over, like there's some longer pieces coming out here and these are higher now. So before uh, we're able to turn it over, we need to actually trim these off. This is a big heavy piece though, so kind of difficult to maneuver around. But having the sliding table on the saw stuff is really nice for situations like this because it really lends a lot of support. Okay, so now we're going to um, trim the, uh, the board here. And we have a flat side to put it down on the saw. Now, if we didn't have that sliding table on a table saw, I think a circular saw and a straight edge would have been a better choice. Obviously, you could also cut it to size on the CNC, but if you have other tools, use those because it's more efficient. I mean, some things the CNC is great for, others you're really better off um, using like a saw for certain things for cuts like that. But of course, if your <laughs> CNC is your main tool, you could, you know, cut on it as well. It's just going to take a while and create some dust. So got the, uh, the top section up here now and it's actually risen up a little bit because we're going to use um, a suction unit. This is the vacuum hold down system. So uh, this is the, the pump right here. We've got it connected to a tube and the pads are underneath the unit. So we're going to turn this on. We're going to have... So this is going to run the whole time. Uh, it doesn't use that much power and it's not that loud. So we're going to have three things running the whole time now. The dust collection. The, uh, the CNC and uh, this. Okay, so now we're basically going to repeat the step that we did on the bottom side for the top side. Securing your workpiece to the CNC I think is one of the, the, the biggest things to get right. Um, and obviously there are multiple ways to achieve the same goal. Side clamps, like cam clamps, or in this situation, vacuum, they both work really well. 
So let's do one pass first. Okay, so now we have done one pass. Let's go back to the program. So for our first cut, we started at zero. Now let's start at 0 0.05, which is how deep we cut previously. Um, and so this is our new starting point and we'll do another five thou cut. And then we'll continue this way. For the next cut, we'll start at 0.1 and then 0.15 inches, since each time we're taking five thou off. When you are surfacing, it's always an equation about how rough a cut you're comfortable with, how fast you want the process to take. Um, but for our final cut here, we want a smoother surface. So we are adjusting the step over rate so it's not quite as aggressive. And the time estimate for this cut is almost 44 minutes, you know, which is okay because we're only doing it once. So at this point we have a, a nice smooth counter that is ready to be trimmed to the exact dimensions and ready to be sanded, finished, all of that. I hope this was a helpful video. If you are in the same situation, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.